Hello, today we will be discussing about nasopharyngeal carcinoma. To introduce nasopharyngeal carcinoma is a non lymphomatous squamous cell carcinoma that occurs in the epithelial lining of the nasopharynx. It frequently arises from pharyngeal bridges, so called fossa of origin molar, which is posterior medial to the medial crura of station tube opening in the nasopharynx. This is the fossa of origin molar, you can see this is the fossa and the, this is the station tube. And the tumor arises from here, from the fossa of This is the most common site for origin of nasopharyngeal carcinoma. So, okay, this is the fossa of origin molar. Again, here is a skull base, quena. So, this is the station tube opening, and this is the fossa of origin molar lies somewhere here. Okay, just this area is the fossa of origin molar. Epidemi epidemiology of uh, nasopharyngeal carcinoma it accounts for 85% of adult nasopharyngeal malignancies and 30% of pediatric nasopharyngeal malignancies. So, Nasopharyngeal carcinoma has bimodal age presentation. Already told, it's 85% in adult and 30% in pediatric populations. It is common in Chinese and North African population. Male prevalence of 3.3 is to 1 is found. It has bimodal age presentation with small peak at 15 to 25 years and large peak at 55 to 65 years. Etiology of nasopharyngeal carcinoma is, it is the commonest in Genetic etiology, it is a commonest in southern Chinese population, mongoloid races, it has VSLA association. Viral Epstein-Barr virus has been supposed to cause nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Environmental factors like exposure to nitrosamides, dry salted fish, polycyclic hydrocarbons of smoke of incense and wood are important. Smoking, chronic nasal infection, poor ventilation of nasopharynx is also their common conditions leading to nasopharyngeal carcinoma. WHO classifies nasopharyngeal carcinoma as a histological classification into type 1, type 2 and type 3. Type 1 is keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma which is common in the older uh, adult population. Type 2 is non-keratinizing transitional carcinoma. Type 3 is undifferentiated carcinoma which is common in childhood and adolescents, yeah, which is associated with high epstein barr virus antibody titer. The clinical features of nasopharyngeal carcinoma are Neck swelling is the most common clinical feature. So patient come to us with his, like history of neck swelling. Um, common neck swelling will be lateral interphangeal lymph node of Rubier, which is not seen clinically. So the external neck swelling will be in the bilateral enlarged jugular diagnostic, upper and middle deep cervical, and posterior triangle nodes are the commonest ones. Nasal features around 40% of individuals present with nasal clinical features like blood stain nasal mass, nasal mucosa. Epistaxis, nose block, Holtzman nasal discharge when there is tumor necrosis inside in the nasal pharynx. This is basically uh, as the it is uh, told by patients as sinusitis. They themselves tell that I have sinusitis like that. Autology features are found in 30% of individuals. They are conductive hearing loss and tinnitus. Ophthalmologic features 20% of people present with ophthalmologic features. They are diplopia and ophthalmoplasia, involvement of canal of 3, 4, 6, proptosis orbital invasion and blindness due to involvement of canal of 2. Neurologic features, they are for 20% of individuals. They present as jugular fibrin syndromes. Canal of 9, 10, 11 are involved by the lateral interphangeal lymph nodes of Rubia. Horner syndrome uh, is present when the, patient, when the tumor involves the sympathetic chain. Severe headache due to skull base erosion. Trotter's triad is defined as it is a triad of conductive deafness lateral temporoparietal neuralgia and ipsilateral palatal paralysis, which is different, which is due to conductive deafness due to station to block, ipsilateral temporoparietal neuralgia due to trisimanal nerve involvement, and ipsilateral palatal paralysis due to vagal nerve involvement. This can come as short note in your exam, just one or two marks question. What is total style? Even might come as, uh, in MCQs also. Distant diastasis to bone, lungs, and liver are not uncommon. There are different. Uh, Clinical features of nasopharyngeal carcinoma, this is CNA pharynx, which involves the paraphernalia space to involve the cranial nerve palsies and pterygoid muscles leading to trismus. The retrophangeal lymph nodes leading to neck pain and stiffness. Cervical nodes, upper jugular and posterior triangle nodes in large, already told. Distant metastasis to secondary to long liver and bones. Nose and outbeat leading to nasal obstruction, the epistaxis and proptosis. Station tube leading to serous otitis media, then foramen lastrum and oval leading to ophthalmic symptoms and facial pain. They are the features of nasopharyngeal carcinoma.
how to investigate nasal pharyngeal carcinoma. Investigation is by nasal pharyngoscopy and diagnostic nasal endoscopy is gold standard. Mass is seen in nasal pharynx or fossa vaginal So if you look directly at the fossa vaginal or nasal pharynx, then mass is seen. And the mass might be ulcerative, proliferative, or might be simple diffuse mass. The nasal pharyngeal tumor biopsy is performed either blindly or under vision. If you do endoscopy, then you can uh, do biopsy under vision. If needs of neck is diagnostic. So if you do FNAC, then when the person uh, when the report comes as metastatic carcinoma, then uh, you know the tumor is providing metastasis from the nasal pharynx to the neck if there is mass in the nasal pharynx. CT so scan of head and neck to see tumor extent, skull base erosion, cervical lymph node metastasis is common. So CT scan, if you do CT scan contrast, then this can uh, give you many ideas regarding the tumor involvement or tumor different sides of the tumor. MRI head and neck is used for intracranial extension. In test for metastasis like CT chest and abdomen for liver and lung metastasis, bone scan, bone metastasis, PET scan and liver function tests are also performed. Serological tests for Epstein-Barr virus as I already told, Epstein-Barr virus is a common etiology of nasopharyngeal carcinoma so immunofluorescence for IgA antibodies to viral capsule antigen, IgG antibodies to early antigen of Epstein-Barr virus can be performed. Uh, you can see diagnostic nasal endoscopy here. This is the station tube orifice, and this is the mass in the nasal pharynx in the first abrasion model. Okay, in the bolt of nasal pharynx. You can see here, then uh, gross the mass is proliferative, ulcerative, or infiltrative mass can be visualized there. And this is the proliferative mass you can see over here. Comprised tomogram scan, the CT scan, uh, you can see the, the primary tumor over here in the first of the model. See this opposite site which is quite clear and this is the tumor site, this is the site where the tumor has been uh, originated, originating. And again, immatrimonal fossa and orbital involvement can be seen. So this is the orbital involvement and immatrimonal fossa involvement by the tumor over here. A magnet resonance image, resonance imaging, can you see the primary tumor over here? Again, you can see the intracranial extension. This is the intracranial extension of the tumor. Endoscopic biopsy is under process. Uh, so this is the mass, and endoscopic biopsy has been been performed. Whole body bone scan has been done here to see the intense left sacral optic. So the tumor uh, is metastasizing to rib and the sacrum, in the bones, flat bones. So, PET scan, positional emission tomography, you can see this is the cancer of nasal pharynx, straight bilateral neck nodes. Okay, this is the primary cancer, and you can see bilateral neck node involvement over here. These are the nodes which are being involved. Okay, this is the primary cancer. So, TNM staging uh, for you, the staging has been made simple. I have, been, I have simplified the stage. T1 is tumor confined to nasal pharynx, so this is narrow pharyngeal carcinoma. T2 is soft tissue tumor involvement in oropharynx or nasal cavity or paraphyngeal space. So tumor can go laterally to paraphyngeal space, laterally then either in the oropharynx, inferiorly or nasal cavity, anteriorly. T3 is tumor invasion of bony structures or paranasal sinuses, again <coughs> PNS. So T4 is intracranial involvement of orbit, cranial nerves, invertebral fossa and the hypopharynx. So if the tumor goes to intracranial area, this is uh, defined as T4 stage. N0 is no evidence of regional lymph node involvement, N1 is unilateral involvement, N2 is bilateral involvement, above the supracalvic fossa less than 6 cm in size. N3 is uh, more than 6 cm in, in supracalvic fossa. So this is slightly different from other head and neck uh, tumor neck node metastasis. M0 stands for no evidence of distance metastasis and M1 for distance metastasis present. What is the tumor? Stage 1, T1, N0, M0, T2, stage, uh, N, stage 2, T2 or N1, M0, stage 3, T3 or N2, M0, stage 4, T4 or N3 or M1. When there is metastasis, this is stage 4 tumor. Uh, what are different treatment modalities for nasopharyngeal carcinoma? They are teletherapy or external beam radiotherapy, brachytherapy or localized radiotherapy, chemotherapy, surgery, immunotherapy against Epstein Barr virus, vaccination against Epstein Barr virus, which is under experimental uh, evidence till now. 
Coming to external membrane therapy, there are, we can give in two lateral fields, nasopharynx, scolbis, and upper neck, sparing the temporal lobe, pituitary gland, and the spinal cord because they are important structures in the skull base. One is the anterior field towards the lower neck, sparing the spinal cord and the larynx. So you can see the lateral field, these are the lateral field, one, two lateral fields, and this is the again the, the anterior lateral fields, okay, lower neck, spinal cord, and the larynx is spared over here. Brachytherapy is the treatment of cancer by insertion of radioactive implants directly into the tissue. So in nasopharynx, it is easy to keep the tissue by making a small uh, area over there. It's used for small tumors, residual tumors or recurrent tumors. It can be done in different ways. There are interstitial radiotherapy on the radioactive source like radium, iridium, iodine or gold that are inserted into the tumor tissue, interstitial, so in the interstitium of the tumor. Intracavity tree, the radioactive source is placed inside the catheter or molds and it is inserted into the nasopharynx. So it is simply in, inserted into the cavity and they are inserted into the nasopharynx. Then high dose rate, high intensity radiation delivered with precision under computer guidance. So it can be different, different modalities can be performed. Interstitial brachytherapy is given here, interstitium to the tissue yeah. interstitium. It is just kept in the medium that has been again and introduced over here. Intracavity, see this is the radium, this is a radioactive source and that has been kept here, okay, in the intracavity. The hydrose rate, hydrose rate back therapy has been given here with the help of computerized source. Chemotherapy, the drugs used are cisplatin and 5 fluoride acid, which are the common drugs used for renal neck cancers. Indications for them are radiation failure. And palliation in distinct metastasis. When the patient is having distinct metastasis, you can give uh, the chemotherapy. Surgery is uh, resolving nasopharyngectomy, so it is removal of the nasopharynx, excision, cryosurgery, they are used for residual or recurrent tumors, radical neck dissection for radio resistance, neck metastasis, then palliative debulking for T4 tumors when there is intragan extension and those then just palliative extension is uh, debulking is given. And myringotomy and grommet insertion sometimes when the patient develops uh, right is made of the effusion so then we can perform myringotomy and grommet insertion as well so this is radical neck dissection and interstitial brachytherapy again interstitium so this is interstitium this is the radical neck dissection has been performed over here and the brachytherapy has been given here so just coming to treatment protocol uh, for t1 tumors they are localized tumors in the nasal pharynx we can do external radiotherapy 6500 centigrade or 65 gray then t2 external radiotherapy again 7000 centigrade that is 70 grays t3 t4 radiotherapy plus chemotherapy then we can give brachytherapy and side based surgery if required but our aims will be radiotherapy first plus chemotherapy then n0 go for external radiotherapy when there is no tumor then external radiotherapy of 5000 centigrade that is 50 gray in, when there is necrometastasis, go for external radiotherapy plus chemotherapy, 6000 centigrade plus chemotherapy to be used. Prognosis of the carcinoma, WHO type 2 and type 3 carcinomas have good response to radiotherapy and better survival rates. So, when the tumor is undifferentiated again, there is a high chance that tumor has high uh, radiotherapy response. Average fibro survival rate for treated patients are stage 1, 95 to 100%. Stage 2, 60 to 80 percent. Stage 3, 60, 30 to 60 percent. Stage 4, 20 to 30 percent. When the patient is having distant metastasis, okay, when the tumor has gone to brain so, or orbits, then there is less chance of survival. So it's a 20 to 30 percent of five years survival will be there. So, what is the follow up protocol for carcinoma of nasopharynx? Final assessment of nasopharynx carcinoma has to be made two, three months after the end of treatment. Suppose when there is chemotherapy, the tumor there might be swelling of the uh, local area okay, or this, the swelling of the nasopharynx. Then local and regional exam, examination plus nasopharyngeal endoscopy has to be performed. Either FTG or PET-CT scan and MRI have to be done just to know the extent of disease or whatever is there, whatever has been shrunk. Okay, the tumor shrinkage will be by either chemo or radiation. For first two years, local and regional examination plus nasopharyngeal fibroscopy every three to four months, that is important. Every three months, a uh, patient has to undergo endoscopic examination. Chest X-ray, thyroid function test, and CT MRI yearly to be performed okay, for in the first two years to see the uh, the 
attached stresses also. Then two to five years local and regional examination plus nasopharyngeal fibroscopy every six months. So first two years every three to four months. Then after that, then every six months and chest X-ray, thyroid function test, and CT MRI are to be done yearly till five years. So after five years, when, the, when there is uh, no tumor, then probably we think that the tumor has now uh, tumor won't recur again because the again the mortality or the survival rate has been has been defined in relation to the five years time. Thank you so much. So if you have any problems, you can contact me or you can just like my uh, <coughs> video and you can share my video and you can subscribe my video too. Thank you.